And I also have a good friend of mine, Mr. Thomas Clayton. And Thomas is a good friend of mine from college, and he played um, college football at Kansas State University and now plays for the San Francisco 49ers in the NFL. Playmaker is somebody who takes control of the game at any point in time of the game. Playmaker is one of those guys that where the game pretty much slows down for him and, and anything's possible. I have to be one of those guys. I'm talking to Clay. Any point in time I have the ball in my hand, a big play is going to happen. That's for damn sure. Thomas Clayton on the line, um, great friend of mine. Um, we came up, and one thing I want to say before before he says anything in introducing him, one thing I can say about this man is he's humble and he's real, you know. And no matter where where he was at on campus, no matter what his status was on the football team, he was somebody that I always knew was genuine whenever I saw him. You know, we had that rapport, so I can say that I picked up a lot from him and I respect your game, bro, on and off the field, you know, just for, for staying true to who you are. I appreciate that, man, and I can say the same for you. In fact, uh, when I told my dad I was going to be on the show tonight, he asked me about you, and I said, you know what, it was a brother that was on campus that, and just like you said, wherever I was or wherever you were, I knew when I saw you it was going to be 100%. It was going to be genuine, and I appreciate that just like you appreciate that from me. Yeah, no doubt, man, no doubt. And, I'm, and I appreciate you kicking this um, first show, the franchise room, off with us. Mm-hmm. And so I, far, so good. I, I, no doubt, no doubt. appreciate you. Tennessee and I work with student athletes and and one of the things I try to get across to these guys is because um, the athletic side of it is like second is the back burner for me it's second nature so 
I always focus on the academics and, and life and, and, and try to teach these young men that only 1.6% um, of these guys will make it to the next level. And right. you're one of the 1.6%, so I want to say congratulations, and I have much respect for whatever you did to get to where you're at. But can you share with the listening audience and, and myself and, and the young men that I work with that's listening in tonight, um, what was the process like going from high school to college to the NFL, and, and what were some of the things that you had to do to make sure that you that you met your goals? Well, the road was not was never easy, but I don't think anything that's worth having is, is ever going to be easy. Um, one thing I can say to my credit is that, that I have a, a good support uh, staff, you know, and, and you know my family's always been behind me 100%, and I think that's been a you know a great you know pushing force from behind me to make sure I you know crossed all my T's and dotted all my eyes. Um, transition from high school uh, into college, I think, was probably the biggest one because you go from, uh, you know, living under your parents, listening to your parents, to going to college and, and, and really having to be put into an adult role as a child, as an 18-year-old, you know, child. And so I think that was the biggest transition, um, you know, on the field, you know, with the speed of the game and, and more importantly, off the field with, you know, pretty much having to be, you know, uh, your own boss, you know, with, setting curfews and setting limitations to what you should and should not do. Um, you know, but as the years go on, you you become uh, a sophomore after your freshman year and then a junior after your sophomore year and so on. You know, you, you start to realize, you know, you know what path is good for you. And so by the time I was got to my senior year, I was pretty mature and, uh, you know, making the transition to the NFL after my senior season wasn't as difficult um, as, as it was coming from high school to, uh, to college. <music> Because there's no sports without the grades. 
I mean, I think that would be the key for uh, that, that those guys in that age range. How did you find yourself in Manhattan, Kansas? As the tailback, they start the option. There's Clayton on the pitch, turns the corner at the 40, cuts back to his right. I tell you what, man, uh, well, it started off, I went to Florida State my freshman year. Um, and that goes back to just decision making. Uh, you know, I chose that school uh, probably for the wrong reason. And, uh, you know, I suffered for that my freshman year. Um, you know, pretty much flunked out, to be honest with you, because I was more concerned with partying than I was, uh, you know, with playing football. And, and taking care of business on the, on the school side. I did decent. I did a pretty good job as a true freshman down there on the football field, but, you know, that's not what's important. And uh, so what happened was I was about to flunk out, but uh, before I did that, I, I made a transfer to Kansas State. And that 17 carries 177 yards uh, against Florida International. He just got the hand off, stiff arm, sideline, flag down. He goes out of bounds at the 20. And, uh, you know, it was it was in God's grace that I was able to um, transfer to another Division One school and, uh, you know, not have to go the long route with the junior college, and, you know, for, because I filled out and then hopefully get to a Division One. I was able to go from Division One to Division One. Clayton breaks it inside the five, down to the three. And, um, you know, I, and I think it was a great move uh, for me inside and out because I was able to really just – figure out what my focus was. Former defense could come up with a big stop here. Swing pass to Clayton. Needs that first down. Because I'm from, I'm from the East Coast, the Washington, D.C. area, and it's pretty fast over here. Went down to uh, to Florida State, and, and it's just as fast, you know, as far as uh, in the social sense. And so when I went out to uh, Manhattan, Kansas, you know, it was a little bit slow. It was a great it was a great atmosphere, but it was a little bit slower, and I think that worked out better for me. Back in that eye formation. Here he is. First down and more. Thomas Clayton. Can he turn on that speed once again? Yes. Into the end zone. Thomas Clayton. I was able to really, you know, figure out what it was, what I wanted to do in life, refocus myself, and rededicate myself to my craft, which is football. The screen. They're going to swing it out to Clayton. Always a good option, especially when he does this. Second touchdown of the day. Um, out there, I was around a good, a good group of people. Uh, and, and TJ can attest to that. You know that, you know Kansas State, you know was was a, was a school full of of good quality people. And um, so I went there, um, got myself back on track. Uh, school work, you know, skyrocketed. And you know, and once once I got on the field, every you know everything took care of itself. For the 49ers, they'll go to the run wide open. I see you're down in San Francisco with the 49ers, and I'm, I mean, I'm a fan, and I've been kind of watching. I just love the NFL, period, and I'm going to have to pick you up on my fantasy team next year. One and two. Clayton again. Clayton busts out. Now. All the things that are portrayed about um, Coach Singletary and, and the media, um, behind the scenes and, and just up close and personal, and, and you've been around him and played for him for a year, what type of guy is this? He's a he's a Christian man, a strong, strong Christian man. Um, you know, I, I think he uh, see the, the side that people see of him. Um, you know, that, that intense side. They miss the uh, the sincere side. And uh, you know, he's a man of his word. And you know. second down and seven. Check down. Right now, you know, San Francisco is, is, is in uh, the transformation stage. You know, going from being a team that was at the bottom. At this point, right in the middle, and on its way, on their way to surging to be, you know, amongst the top teams. Um, so nothing's ever easy. So you know, on the outside looking in, you 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 feel like, uh, you know, you're looking at things. You're like, well, you know, great, you know, in the '80s, you know, what's the problem now? 
you know, and, and things change, you know. As far ahead, as far as the offense and understanding the offensive scheme. And, and, and not only that, you know, the type of athletes and people that people that you're dealing with nowadays and compared to uh, back in the day, it's completely different. Um, so he's trying to instill just that, that quality of ball that was played back in the day when he played. And it's not necessarily easy, but I think he's getting his point across. And um, I see San Francisco doing real well in years to come. Kind of knocking on the door, didn't finish real well. Going to have a little different offensive philosophy this year, but I, I, I like them too. That's Thomas Clayton. Penalty. I got one more question for you, and I mean, I just like want to I want to personally thank you for coming on tonight and and supporting sure. what we're trying to do. You know, we're 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 the we're the guys that's trying to climb the ladder, so it's kind of hard to get guys on like you sometimes. So we really appreciate you coming on. Um, just kind of take us through the day-to-day -day life of an NFL player. Um, I keep hearing, I've been around a lot of NFL players. My brother played in the NFL, and I got a chance to kind of live that lifestyle through him um, as a young man. Just kind of let everyone know the day-to-day -day life of a professional athlete. I mean, take us through the eight hours of the day. Well, I tell you what, uh, what people don't realize is that it is a real job. It's a, it's a job. And, uh, you know, you're probably waking up earlier than someone working the 9 to 5. Clayton again cuts back, and now it's a foot race, and Clayton with a stiff arm tries to get in and does. Um, cause we've got meetings that start at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, so you got to wake up, eat breakfast, and get in your meeting. Then you meet for two hours, then you'll get a break to either eat lunch or work out, and then you'll go back and meet again. Then you'll go out on it for another two hours. Then you'll go out on the field and do a walkthrough for an hour. By then it's like 2 o'clock and then you'll have maybe a 30-minute break. Then you're on the field for two hours. And then after the field, then you, if the guys who didn't lift uh, for their lunch break, then they'll work out and lift weight, eat dinner, and then you're back in the uh, film room and you're meeting for another two hours. So before it's all said and done, you may not get home until about 5 or 6 o'clock. So you go from 7.30 to about 5 or 6 o'clock, and that's a routine that you do throughout the season. And it's a 17-week you know, season, including the bye week. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty stressful job mentally and physically. So um, you know to everybody out there that's listening that think it's a cupcake job and it's something that it's all fun and games. I mean they got the, the, the fun part right because it is fun to play what you love, but at the same time it's a, definitely a job without a doubt. I start rolling as a team. I think we kind of got into a flow, and then once we started to flow, we got in the zone and started to take care of business. And uh, it's almost like the, uh, the preseason, which was really short, kind of he got it all in, in one. <laughs> it's kind of like jam-packed a whole bunch, into, whole bunch into a little bit of time, you know what I mean? But, I mean, that just shows the versatility of these guys and how we can adjust to different things. And uh, I think we're doing good so far. we got a long way to go, but I think so far so good. Does it make it, now that this first one's behind and you got to win, uh, does it make the second one seem a little more normal since it'll be eight or ten days in between to actually prep for that? Well, I think our preparation will remain the same. I don't think it'll make anything any easier. I mean, I think we'll have to prepare for each team the same way. Um, but to get that first one under our belts definitely makes us feel good as a team um, because that's our goal each week to go out and get a W. And uh, so it feels good to get the first one, but our preparation will stay the same. Uh, it's great to go out and, and play the way you want, but it's also nice to win even though it really doesn't count in the preseason. Well, I mean, everything counts. <laughs> Every time we step on the field, it counts. So that win counts for us, and we're excited for I'm gonna definitely keep my own, you man. Keep keep the dream alive, brother. And I'm I'm gonna watch it, and I hope the best for you, man. And and hopefully we can get you back on, and I hear from you again. Absolutely, and I, I appreciate yeah. you guys having me on. Definitely, TV. He, he knows he's confident as a starting quarterback for for the Seattle Seahawks. Big reception by Thomas Clayton, and a huge gain afterwards, picking up a first down across the. Before I let you go, I got a quick question for you um, because I know you, and it's kind of, you know, more so on the personal and the spiritual aspect of things because I know it's probably people out there, not probably, I know it's people out there that can relate to you, and they're, they're the ones who are leaning on to your every word right now. You know what I'm saying? You're the one who's proof to them, you know, regardless whether they – don't know anybody in the NFL, or not to hear you live on an average guy's, you know, radio station online and see where we've come from. It's inspiring to them. And um, it's deja vu, actually, for me, because um, I remember when we had that conversation when you was heard back in college, you know. Right. Um, and with you being heard now, 
I just wanted to ask um, the question for these people that get sidetracked or get discouraged, whether it's from getting hurt, whether it's from not getting initially drafted, whether it's from having a rocky semester, you know, and being ineligible or whatever, you know, I just want to know what's the most valuable and rewarding lesson that you learned then and now um, while you've been injured. Well, I mean, I tell you what, it's not where you start, it's where you finish, and that's why, you know, that poem that you guys opened up with was uh, was touching, you know, because, cause you know, if you listen to, you know, the underline of, of what she's saying in that poem, you know, regardless of what's taking place, still she rises. And I think that, that's inspiration to everybody because it's not where you begin, it's where you finish. And uh, if you got that drive from within, that drive will definitely take you where you need to be. And uh, to have that never quit mentality is what I think we all need it as a society because, I mean, I think sometimes people get sidetracked by their shortcomings but it's not about the shortcomings. It's how you respond to the shortcomings, and that's where you, and that's how you define as an individual. And um, you know, once once it's all said and done, I want my legacy to be left, and I want to be somebody that people remember not only for what I did on the field, but how I am as a man. And I think with that never quit and I never never fail mentality, I think I'll be able to establish that. No doubt. Man, I thank you, brother, again for your time, man, and we thank you. Um, just appreciate you, and we definitely going to have you back on sometime in the future. Sounds good to me. Man, we appreciate it, man. I'm going to have to get you down here to Nashville and uh, come holler at my kids and, and some different things that I do. I'm having a conference that's coming up. But I have to holler at you off the air, man. We appreciate you. Um, you're a real dude, man, and, and we, we like real dudes around here. So we appreciate you coming on. No problem. Y'all take care. All right, thanks. All right, bro. Take it easy. How about now?